So, you have a character that you absolutely love, you drew them out, you got the pose down, you're having a good time, but what the heck are you going to dress them in? Every artist has gone through this, been there, done that, and it sucks. And trying to figure out the right type of outfits for your character can be so annoying, it's right up there with trying to figure out a name for your character. Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> Don't worry guys, my name is Lizbeth, I'm a published author here in America and today my YouTube babies, hashtag love my babies, I'm going to show you guys some super useful hacks, tips and techniques for coming up with awesome outfits that will not just suit the characters you are drawing but will also suit the world you are creating for your characters. So be sure to get some paper, pencils, pens, drawing paper anything you need to take notes and maybe even sketch along with me because I have a lot to share guys and please stay to the very end not just because I have lots of info that I don't want you guys to miss but at the end of this video I'm going to be sharing some artwork that you guys drew but remember my last art tutorial I told you guys to use hashtag mushroom family hw1 yes I'm going to be featuring some of your artwork at the end of this video and I will also be giving you another Mushroom Family homework assignment at the end of this video so that I can see your progress. But we'll talk about that at the end of the video guys. It's gonna be fun! So do not miss the end of the video. So, <laughs> so without further ado, let's get started. Number one, try to keep the outfits you create for your characters timeless. This is something I want you guys to keep in mind as you watch this entire video. Now, what do I mean by timeless? You're very important. Most people want their work to be able to be enjoyed years and years into the future. And in order to really do that, you need to steer clear from things that will go out of style too, too, too soon. Rob Ross once said in an interview that he chose to wear a classic button-down shirt and blue jeans because he wanted his viewers who may watch his program 30, 40, 50 years into the future to be able to watch the program and not feel like it's super old and dated. Spare for his afro, the outfit that he's wearing is actually very timeless. People still wear that outfit even now so you can still watch his program and it still feels relevant and doesn't feel super, super, super dated. You know what I mean? Tadashi Ozawa once said in one of his how to draw books that to stay away from really, really trendy things because they're going to go out of style within two, three, four, five years. And the problem with that is if you create an outfit that looks really, really trendy right now, it might look really stupid in a few years and people are going to read your comics and manga and look at your artwork and be like, wow, that is so mid-2000s. You know when you watch like a sci-fi movie and you're like, wow, this movie is so 80s. Look at their hair. Look at their outfits. Like it's supposed to take place in the future, but they still gave them current trendy clothing. You know what I mean? Like it's really 80s. Because the problem is most people who create manga and comics and so on, they don't usually tell you what year the story is taking place in. So stay away from really really trendy things and try to create outfits that you feel will still be in style a few years from now. Now if your story is meant to take place in 2018 or 2015, 16, there are definitely outfits that you can give your characters that will definitely make you feel like it's taking place in that year, you know what I mean? If your story is taking place in medieval times, Victorian era, the 70s, the 90s, there are outfits that you can definitely, definitely draw your characters in that'll make us, the viewer, the reader, understand what year it takes place in. But unless you're going to tell us what year the story is going to take place in, trendy clothing may not be the right way to go. However, <laughs> if you created your own world, your own universe, your own countries and all that other stuff, and it's your own unique individual world, you now have the freedom to create outfits and fashion that completely are all your own. That doesn't belong to a specific era, it doesn't belong to a specific country or a specific year or anything. It's literally all their own. You look at it and it will never look dated because it belongs to their own universe, 
and their own rules of fashion. Number two, you need to really understand who your characters are as people. They are not characters. They are human beings. They are living beings. So you need to know who they are as people so that you can understand what kind of fashion they enjoy wearing. This to me is the fun part. It's like going shopping with the characters, you know what I mean? That's a lot of fun, girl. So, <laughs> so I'm going to use characters from my series as an example so that you guys can better understand where I'm coming from with this, right? Like my character Bandela, you first meet her in volume 3 of my published series, Sacred. I think of her as very sweet, very bubbly. So I like to dress her up with bows and little frilly outfits and Lolita inspired fashion. But I also think of her as having a very strong will and she's very ready and willing to defend herself. So I'll put her in a mini skirt, a skin tight mini skirt underneath her Lolita coat. <laughs> so I think it's a really good representation of who she is as a person. I also have a lot of fun designing really cute fancy platform shoes for her. Mm, so much fun. Like girl, I really love platform shoes. Like it's a problem. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Did I also mention that you can base your character's outfits off of your own outfits? You can base your character's outfits off of your own outfits or outfits of people that you know and care about. This actually was very, very useful for me because everyone around me is very, very fashion forward. I love paying attention to how other people express themselves through clothing and every decade the clothing really really does change so I made a lot of sketches took a lot of photographs over the years of what people wear how they dress and what goes in and out of fashion number four find an article of clothing online in a magazine on a person in a store really look at that and if you feel that it suits one of your characters draw your character in it and try to play around with different accessories skirts pants that can go with that one article of clothing like if you find like a little corset or something and you have a character that you think will look really cool in that corset draw your character in that corset and maybe make a copy of it on like a regular photocopier and on the copies start drawing accessories sleeves a big dress around it really play around with it you know what i mean and just see what goes with it get to know your characters and look for some inspiration out there because we're not all fashion designers you know what i mean but there's a lot of people who are <laughs> and they have photos of their designs online and in catalogs magazines and even in the store don't be afraid to take pictures of fashion in the store when you're there you're like chicken 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 take your pictures you know <laughs> go home and make some sketches and now that you have heard all these hacks tips tricks and techniques that can help you figure out how to dress your characters it's time for a little assignment i want you guys to use hashtag mushroom family hw2 on instagram and twitter and i want you to design two outfits a casual everyday outfit that's more modern day and a fancy gown for a fancy event you can do this for male characters female characters children adults it really doesn't matter i just want you guys to use some of these techniques that i have shared with you today and put them into play to practice a little bit okay and for those of you who participated in my first assignment, guys, here they are. You guys did so amazing. You guys worked so freaking hard. And I was so proud of my YouTube babies. Some of you even drew me, which I thought was so freaking cool. Was not expecting that. Thank you so much, guys, for participating in my homework assignment last time. And I will feature a bunch of you in my next art tutorial. So be sure to drop, use this hashtag, and at me in the caption as well, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe and press the notification bell so that you will never miss another video like this. Be sure to give it a big thumbs up to let me know that you enjoyed it. And please check out my series, Sacred, which is available in stores right now. And you can read the first two chapters here on YouTube. Links to all of that is down there in the description box below. And until next time, guys, please take care. God bless. And do not be afraid to nerd out. Take care, guys. Bye.